Hi, my name is Timur Savan. Welcome to the 2017 LED Light Shootout, sponsored by Sekonic. Some of what you're going to see today is a wide range of manufacturers and how their lights will actually perform compared to traditional lighting systems like HMI or tungsten or even daylight. The purpose of this is so that when you bring an LED light onto set, you're going to be able to have a good sense of how that light is going to interact with traditional lighting units. Things like color shifting, color accuracy, magenta, green spikes. These are things that have plagued LEDs in the past. With the modern improvement, some of them have actually gotten surprisingly good. LEDs are capable of such a wide range of color. Being able to dial in precisely 32, 56, or whatever you're trying to balance your lights to, having the meter is really helpful because it can help you bring them exactly to where you need them to be so that they fit together seamlessly. So essentially what we did for a testing procedure was we had three models, a gray card, a white card, a standard color checker. We exposed for at key, 45% in log, and what that did was it gave us a baseline to compare all the different units. And we controlled intensity by moving the light closer or further away so that they were all at peak brightness, at their best possible performance. We did two control groups. We did daylight, which is the sun, and we did tungsten, uh, an RE1K, standard light that everybody's used to. We metered the control unit. We white balanced the camera to the light from the control unit. As we went through each of the units, we dialed each one in to get it as close as possible. We metered its reading, we recorded that data, we put it on the slate, and you'll see it in the background on the side. And also in the frame, you'll also see the actual meter image from the screen. So you'll get a chance to look at its CRI spectrum, as well as its magenta and green shifts and how far it deviates from the norm, whether it's daylight or tungsten. So here we have the daylight uh, control group. Um, as you can see, the spectrometer, spectrograph reading is com almost completely saturated from ultraviolet to infrared, so um, with an RA of 99.5. And that's, that's the baseline that we're trying to match here. Um, here you can see, this is a good example, you can see the, the three bumps, the green, the blue, and the yellow, red. Um, as you get through the lights and as the, it's actually a really good qualifier for the quality of the light that's coming out of it. You, you kind of want that bump to be flat. You don't really want bumps. You want them all to be kind of merged together and that sort of shows that there's a uh, continuous spectrum happening. Uh, most LEDs in general, for the most part, will never really truly reproduce uh, full reds. Uh, so you'll see on the, on the spectrograph over there that uh, the red is usually a tough one to, to get. Uh, in this case, you'll see there's a huge yellow spike. And these are the, these are the reasons why you need a, a C700, because you're looking for things like that. Like, I could have told you that this image would have had a yellow cast just by looking at that, that graph. Uh, in this case, the uh, Westcott's um, visually looks great. Um, and, be, and you can see here, the, its RA rating is a 93.2, and while that's not perfect, um, just by the nature of LEDs and the discontinuous spectrum, sometimes a great CRI rating doesn't necessarily translate into a perfect image. Um, there's great Dray casts here, they look pretty nice. A uh, tiny bit magenta, but overall pretty good. Uh, Razor has a nice, uh, healthy balance of uh, color. You can see it in the RA rating, the chips are all pretty high. And, and basically the function of the graph is that the higher, the higher the level, you could say the more saturated it is in that color. Um, as it goes from ultraviolet on the, or blue, you know, very, very blue into violet range on the left side to red on the right side. And the taller the wave goes, that's the more saturated that color is. Uh, so a tall wave in general will give you richer colors and offer uh, usually more accuracy. Here you can see the yellow red end of the spectrum is lower than the green end and that kind of gives you the is, is why you're feeling a green tint in the image because the green spectrum is more saturation than the red and yellow. 
whereas this one is very saturated all over, um, which is good, and that and that means that there's it's actually reproducing uh, quite a bit of color across the range, um, and it looks pretty good. The the Felix looks nice. Here are the pipe lights. Now this is when we're getting our first remote phosphor uh, light. Um, this is sort of a newer LED technology and. They reproduce colors really well by having a phosphorescent coating react with uh, a UV um, catalyst light. Uh, the Cineo Maverick is the same, and in general, they actually produce a really high quality, balanced light that's pretty rich across the spectrum. Uh, even if it doesn't look like it on the meter, they, they, do, tend to, they do tend to perform very well. Uh, the Xylite F8, uh, this one looks really good. I just think it has quite a nice balance of color. Uh, a little bit thin on the um, model on the left, but overall pretty good. The BBS Area 48 is another remote phosphor unit, um, and it has a, a nice uh, warm tone overall, but um, that usually looks pretty nice on people. I find the uh, LC5 a little green. But you can see that on the spectrum. You can actually see how sharply it increases from the aqua tone to the pure green and how that spike translates into uh, the image. Here are the uh, green and the uh, yellow, orange, red area. Um, yellow, orange, red is actually pretty high, so it's, it's counteracting the green, which is why the Kinos look so neutral. Um, and, and the, again, the flatter and higher they are together, that's sort of what creates the feel of a really nice, uh, really nice image, because that means you're getting a good even spread of, of all the wavelengths. Now, this one's the one that's fun. This is the Plasma Light by Hive. Um, it has the most red out of all of the, the lights you're going to see, pretty much, except for tungsten itself, and uh, full of spikes. but pretty evenly spread throughout. So it is gonna have some, some bumps here and there in the spectrum, but the fact that it saturates so high, um, it'll be somewhat covered and you'll, you'll get, you should get really nice color rendition out of the plasma system, even if it needs a little bit of color correction to get there. Again, the Cineo HSX is another remote phosphor and it looks really nice, very neutral. The Kinoflow Celeb, again, you can see there's a bit of a spike in the green, but it almost spikes more in the aqua, scent, uh, aqua range of the spectrum uh, with a high red-orange to counter, which again balances out the, the color spectrum on the image. And of course, the uh, RE Sky panel has a pretty sharp green spike, in, and I do see it there, but it does have a magenta correction built in, so I think we had activated it a little bit. Um, to, to balance it out. We, I think we have that in our spec sheet in there somewhere. Here's an HMI, similar to the plasma light. Uh, a little bit bumpy on the spectrum, but very richly saturated. And um, the reason it looks blue, even though its color temperature is pretty spot on to everything else, is that it has so much more blue than an LED can even produce. So it registers as blue. But when that's balanced and, and you correct that in either in camera or in post, it actually matches up beautifully. Now into the tungsten range. Uh, here's the 1K and that spectrum is just perfect. Uh, a nice clean line going corner to corner. So here, what you're looking for is a smooth ascension towards the red. Now, an LED will never truly go corner to corner the way the tungsten did. Um, it tends to spike in the yellow range and then drop off as you reach red with a bump in blue, which is kind of natural to LED. They always have a blue base. Um, what you're looking for for a high quality image is a lack of green spike. Um, or something like the Wasp here has, has a very sharp yellow spike and, and you can see it with a, a very little blue. And, and that's, there's no blue to balance out the yellow, so it, that's why it takes on that kind of a tint. 
Draycast has a pretty good uh, spectrum in comparison to for an LED in general. That's kind of uh, how it's, most of them average out by the time you get them together. The uh, Astra is very good. Uh, no major jumps anywhere. And actually it's blue is kind of, has a, sort of the right amount. Um, so it has a nice balance. And the quasars, um, a little on the magenta side, but magenta doesn't seem to be a bad thing per se because it actually makes the skin tones look quite good. If it goes too magenta, then unfortunately you're going to have to add green, and that never really works out great. Uh, same here with the FNV Ultra Color K8000. I feel this light has a really nice balance of color, um, and it sort of I feel like with this one light in particular, you see the color comes out in the lips. Um, you can see like subtle tones come out that you kind of lose in some of the other lights except for the uh, Kina Flow. Uh, and I think I found that that's kind of like a signifier of something that's really high quality. I wonder if the uh, Q500 has some sort of dual LED spectrum because it has always seems to have two major blue spikes. Um, and I wonder if that's a way that they're achieving uh, good quality color. The uh, for Area 48s came up a, a bit uh, warmer than I was expecting for a remote phosphor, but it does also seem to spike a little further right in the range, which means it has a lot more red. Um, and red is good. Red actually gives you, you know, a, a richer skin tone. Uh, it might need a little more correction, but or at least a camera white balance specifically to that light. But when you do that, it should uh, lock in quite nice. The Kina Flow looks phenomenal, as expected. Uh, Mole Richardson's a little green. You can see how the green range is heftier than it is in some of the other lights. And the yellow spike is a little further to the left, um, meaning it has a little less red. So the two, obviously green versus red, they're not balancing each other out, so it comes across as a little green. Felix Matrix has a bit of a green spike there, but otherwise looks quite nice. The Dapio is interesting because um, it has a sort of a warm tinge, but it seems to affect only darker skin models more. Uh, it seems like it's enhancing the colors that's already there. The, the, the darker tones uh, and the middle tones are kind of being enhanced a bit. Um, it's just something to be aware of and the reason you test lights to see what they do. The celeb is about, looks visually about perfect. Uh, I think they look really, really good. Um, all three look fantastic. All three are represented accurately, and that's actually important and difficult to do. The sky panel, you can see the green spike really uh, taking effect here, and how narrow the yellow spike is, and it really tints the, tints the overall image um, pretty far yellow. I want people to really walk away from this with, armed with the knowledge so that when they go out to rent a light or they go out to buy a light, they have at least some sense of what they're going to expect from it. Um, they can see how some of the lights that are very inexpensive performed as well, if not better, than some of the really expensive lights. Um, and they can see where it's valuable to them to save the money or to go for the fuller featured units that do more, but obviously are far more expensive.